I wanted to start the day with a conversation I had with Dr. W.R. Butler up at Cornell on negative energy post-calving. I think you'll find it useful. Well, the history is that every lactating dairy cow uh, goes into negative energy balance immediately after she has her calf because uh, at that point in time, there's a, a genetic drive to produce high quantities of milk very quickly, and at the same time, her spontaneous appetite lags behind the, uh, the energy requirements for milk production. So negative energy balance, by definition, is the difference between the energy consumed and the energy requirement at that point in the animal's life cycle, or instantaneously so. It does repair itself over the next few weeks in early lactation as appetite increases, but there's always a period of negative energy balance. So it's like athletes and other trained individuals. There are periods when intake doesn't meet the demand. That's pure and simple. And over the last, oh, 15 years or so, I and my students have investigated several ways in which negative energy balance seems to be very strongly associated with the decline in fertility that has been observed in the dairy industry, not only in this country, but around the world. Even a longer history, if you go back 40 to 50 years and you look at levels of milk production in dairy cows and the level of fertility, since that time, milk production has has more than doubled and unfortunately reproductive performance or, or fertility has been halved, has decreased at least 50% from where it was in the 1950s to its current level of only about perhaps 30% in uh, commercial dairies, 25 to 30% are a lot of people's estimates. So our research then has uh, investigated physiologically what the effects or the system in which the energy demands for milk production have resulted in the decrease in, uh, in, in fertility during lactation. And we've measured lots of different hormones that are related to ovarian activity. We use ultrasound machines to monitor ovarian function, ovarian follicular development, ovulation, we monitor cycles. We try then to make conclusions about the interactions of these physiological parameters. The different hormones were very interested in the, in the metabolic situation in these cows. Uh, we're interested in liver function. So we monitor glucose, non-esterified fatty acids, which is usually referred to as NEFA, tone bodies. We, we monitor insulin. Anything having to do with the metabolic profile, we then try to relate to the hormones that are related to ovarian activity and that ultimately then relate to fertility in the cow. Some of the history is maybe some of the perspective. So as we think about preparing these cattle for the potential for insemination again, there then is an issue related to body uh, composition, the uh, energy levels that they have inherent in preparation for insemination. There's nothing really that we can do about the negative energy flow just as a result of nutrition. I mean, I'm sure nutrition is maxed out as it is as far as the energy content of the feeds. But I think you're maybe overstating it a little bit. I had hoped that we could do more, have more effective uh, nutritional strategies to deal with the negative energy balance, but you're absolutely right. There's little we can do about cows going into negative energy balance because we've selected the animals genetically to, to do that because of their ability to produce lots of, of milk. But I will say that nutritionists and consultants in general now compared to maybe 10 to 15 years ago, I do think the nutritional strategies are, are better now. So I think that cows in general will spend fewer weeks in negative energy balance during early lactation and they're probably less extensively going into uh, or they go into negative energy balance but to a, a less extensive condition than before. And this is a combination of better nutrient balance in the rations but also better attention to the diets fed to the animals before calving during the non-lactation period. And probably one of the most important things is recognizing that body condition of the cow before calving is a very important predictor of negative energy balance. So for example, one might think that building up body reserves and adipose tissue in preparation for lactation would be good, but it turns out that heavy body condition, over-conditioning cows, 
is no blessing. It actually puts cows in a much more difficult metabolic situation to enter into lactation than if they have more moderate body condition. It's a combination of understanding the metabolic interactions, uh, tailoring diets to maximize energy density, that's, that's certainly true, but along with other diet constituents so that the, uh, the transition from the diet before they have their calf through the first few weeks of lactation goes a lot more smoothly. A lot of interactions here. It's not we don't have a silver bullet, that's for sure. But uh, I think in general we have to give nutritionists a lot of credit for at least minimizing the negative energy balance problems. But at the same time, during this same period, milk production continues to increase. So uh, they, they've made some gains there. Genetic selection you mentioned a little earlier, and of course that's that generally in those areas it's kind of a pendulum as we move to an area where our focus is specifically on milk production. Production. And then we recognize, you know, we've got some framework in the animals that's maybe beginning to break down, so now we have to go back to constitution. And, and now we're kind of behind Europe because in Europe they've been paying attention to actually genetic selection for reproduction along with milk production for quite a period of time. But I see some, some attention to that in this country as well now. W.R. Butler. I've got an in- We have news that India may have bought as much as 496,000 tons of wheat, largely Russian um, and Canadian, and that was seen as slightly negative to the uh, U.S. wheat price uh, structure, and we settled lower, kind of giving back all of Friday's gains. Bossy says weather is the dominant factor in the grains right now. We're all concerned by the building dryness throughout Minnesota, uh, portions of uh, Iowa, uh, even through you there up in the Dakotas. Um, the, the forecast just does not show a lot of moisture for the next 10 to 14 days. We kind of get into what we call a ridge trough pattern. And with that pattern in the Gulf being closed, it just looks like, uh, although we won't be as warm as we were on the weekend, there just isn't a lot of rain for those drying areas. And uh, with corn and some of these other crops nearing pollination, we are concerned by, of course, that lack of soil moisture and the potential of stress if he were to move. The line of Chicago wheat settled 12 lower yesterday. September down 10 and a half. Minneapolis, September, 9 and a quarter lower. Kansas City closing 11 and three quarters lower. Wheat market fell to the day's lows near the close in late trading. Sell stops were hit in Chicago when September broke through its 20-day moving average. Pressure early from Kansas City as it fell on commercial hedge pressure. Weekly export data disappointing at 10.8 million bushels. Uh, the trade expected 18 to 21 million bushels of wheat exports. Corn September closed two and a quarter lower yesterday. December down one and three quarters. Market started lower as corn tried to trade cooler Midwest weather as the crop starts tasseling and pollination. Weekly crop condition rating down three percentage points from last week. Export inspections well behind what's needed to meet USDA's estimates. August beans up six and a quarter yesterday. November up six. Beans higher late on chart-related buying. Export inspections well below what's needed to meet USDA's projections. Soybean crop condition ratings also down three percent. This is the Red River Farm Network. Tuesday, July 10th. Good morning. It's time for Livestock Markets. I'm Don Wick on the Red River Farm Network. Some slight gains in live cattle futures yesterday. There was some buying in reaction to the $3 higher cash cattle business seen Friday in the plains that supported the live cattle market. Feeder cattle.